Canadesi, I'm sorry, Joe, if I mangled that a bit. Uh, and we would like to go for 10 minutes. You could divide your time or you can present in one 10 minute block. Well, before we begin, first of all, thank you very much. Your, your pronunciation wasn't all that bad, and you're <laughs> forgiven. Uh, Mr. Dan Montesano uh, is accompanying me. He's the, uh, the chair of the Community Advisory Committee Board, uh, but I'll be doing most of the speaking. So, uh, without much further ado, Madam Chair and colleagues around the table, thank you for affording us the opportunity to enter into your deliberations regarding the state of some of Canada's cultural institutions, because I think that's what we're talking about particularly as they relate to heritage, citizenship, participation in the development of our country. We are acutely aware that uh, your decisions and your recommendations to government will have an impact on the survivability of quote-unquote local media and with it the continuance of iconic instruments for the promotion of our Canadian identity. This is so because the committee, as it has seen to date, uh, knows that the financial stability of some of those institutions in the Canadian mosaic, perhaps most urgently the print media, is fragile. We speak at the Corriere Canadese for ourselves, but our experience is reflected in that of others, bigger and smaller, as you've heard already this morning. They, as we recognize that the federal government by its actions determines the successes or failures of many industries, including our own. Our submission may strike you as a plea for assistance. We don't apologize, it should. We are no less exempt from the vagaries of the marketplace than the bigger and larger enterprises like Post Media in search of government allies. Now before we make that plea, however, let us allow to uh, present ourselves and some of our value-added contributions to the Canadian heritage. Now, some of the history of the Corriere Canadese and the Italian Canadian community it both serves and represents in Canada will already be known to some of you. If so, please indulge us the repetition. The most recent Stats Canada figures place the number of Canadians who consider themselves ethnically Italian to be in the range of 1.4 to 1.5 million. Um, that's about 4 to 5 percent of the overall population of Canada. Now, just under 1 million of them live in Ontario and about 800,000 of them in the Golden Horseshoe. Of this total, approximately 250,000 still use Italian exclusively, primarily, or frequently during the conduct of their daily business. These are relevant stats because we're talking about the nature of Canada and the communities that make up its whole. The Corriere di Canadese is Canada's only lang Italian language daily, daily newspaper. It has been reporting on and commenting on the history of this demographic since 1954. It also takes editorial positions on the role in administration of government at all levels and jurisdictions. Sometimes it does this in English. The Corriere Canadese remains the third longest surviving daily in the GTA, behind only the Globe and Mail and the Toronto Star. Incidentally, the Corriere Canadese receives no federal government assistance. It is worth no noting that as a demographic and as a medium, we do not fit into the funding compartments reserved for either the two official languages or for First Nations. And yet, Italian Canadians have been a part of Canada from its first documented contact with Europeans. Giovanni Caboto, or as some of you know him, John Cabot, was the first recorded European to come to Canadian shores. There have been others, but he's the first recorded one. In 1497, under the commission, granted to him by Henry Tudor when he landed in what has become Bonavista, Newfoundland. From then until now, Italians have played a role in the building of the country they now proudly call their own. It is a rare community or industry in Canada that does not feel their presence from the former steel and mining towns of industry, uh, 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 mining industries in towns like those in Sydney to those in Hamilton, Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, Winnipeg and Trail. The same can be said for the some 350 forestry lumber dependent towns everywhere across Canada. So also for the agriculture and the agro-production centers anywhere from southern Ontario westward. In transportation, both in the CPR and CNR, relied on an Italian labor force, much of which stayed beyond the rail construction phase and became builders of communities from Vancouver to Kamloops to Canmore to Red Deer, Thunder Bay, GTA, Montreal, and Halifax. Today, they're a significant player in the auto parts industry of Southern Ontario. 
everywhere they have been a model for Canadian multiculturalism, even before that model became enshrined in law in 1971. In fact, since 1954, the Kurira Canadese has been able to tell the story of their and our need to promote integration, participation, the promotion of diversity, along with the benefits that these accrue to Canadian social values. In every part of Canada, their children are the first to seek out alliances and partnerships outside their own community in order to promote the interests of the whole. As my colleague said a few moments ago, it is an essential element of the democratic aspect of Canada. Perhaps there are no clearer examples of this than the immediate past presidents of the Canadian Labour Congress, the National Council of Business Issues, now the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, and the founding president of Service Canada, all of them scions of that integrated community in Canada. But there are other numerous sterling examples of Canadian Italian-Canadian leadership in pension funds, philanthropy, food services, academia, the arts, foreign affairs, and so on. But back to Corriere Canadese. It used to be fiscally equipped to tell those Canadian stories of success and the values they represent. We would like to continue to do that and to maintain that all-important connection to Europe and Italy in particular. Italy is now a significant Canadian trading partner and one likely to become even more so if the CETA is ratified. However, as with our English language counterparts, our revenue stream is challenged. You've heard that this morning. Consequently, our ability to reach into the communities in the outer reaches of Canada's vast ge uh, geography are severely limited. We now focus on the GTHA, where we can generate subscription revenue, single copy sales, and limited, though relatively consistent, advertising. We consider ourselves a job creator, an incubator for the creative arts and a vehicle for reaching out to the Canadian citizenry. Everything we do is generated, produced, and distributed in Canada. But our paper is not distributed free of charge. It costs money to manufacture product. The government of Canada can be very helpful if it so chooses. It's a major league advertising presence because it needs all vehicles to inform the public on matters of importance to all Canadians. Nonetheless, the department that coordinates the ad buys for the purpose of informing the public about government activities actually excludes the Corriere Canadese completely from those ad buys. It claims, and I paraphrase, that the Italian community is not a target of its communication strategy and that at any rate, the community is serviced by mainstream media. How does it know? Just like that, 5% of Canadian society disappeared from government communication strategy and with it, all of its contributions, this demographic makes towards sustaining our society, our economy, and our governing apparatus. A little bit like Mr. O'Day said about the local communities everywhere around Canada. Poof. They disappear. Somehow it was deemed absorbed, assimilated into another. How? Ironically, the mainstream press in our market complains of precipitous loss of readership. So what are they reading? Please understand that the annual government that, that the, the annual less than two minutes, Mr. Volpe. Okay, annual government of Canada ad buy is not insignificant for us. Of the one hundred million dollars spent last fiscal year on a per capita basis, some four to five million dollars would have been spent through our language media. It's gone somewhere else. Even if one were to accept the argument, and we do not, that only 8.5 million was spent on print, that that still represents about $425,000 for an Italian language press in Canada. For an enterprise like ours, which has 11 employees and is responsible for an additional 10 FTEs, that's, uh, that represents a difference between survival and additional employee attrition. The Creative Canadese also receives no share of the ad buy allocated for online advertising, although our nascent online edition receives about 85,000 hits per day and receives over 100,000 unique visitors per month. Now, we think it would be good value for our money and for Canadian taxpayers. Furthermore, Canadian Corriere Canadese is shut out from any direct grants and contributions under the Aid to Publishers program. 
The last fiscal year, the program distributed approximately 75 million of our taxpayer dollars to qualified applicants. Yet, it is virtually impossible for us to qualify. Because we are classified as third language, we are relegated to periodic section and we are automatically disqualified because we publish every day. Mr. Volpe, thank you. Your time is up and perhaps during the question period you can uh, bring in some of the other issues you were trying to bring in. Thank you. I guess the, uh, uh, the other one is uh, uh, for Mr. Volpe. Uh, the, you, the last comments you made were disqualified because we publish every day. Uh, can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Well, the, the program allows for, allows for uh, third language publication in local, in local publications, it, it, but it excludes dailies. We're a daily, even though we're third language. We're essentially a community paper. We're a much larger community paper than most others, but we can't qualify. And uh, that, that brought us essentially to ask for a presentation, in part because we agree with uh, Monsieur O'Day. Uh, it's not only a question as uh, uh, Mr. Beton said about equitability, but it's also an equilibrium in the marketplace. And the government, through its decisions, can establish an equitability, but it can also reestablish equilibrium, especially as it relates to revenues and through its participation in that revenue stream. I'm going to uh, share it with Mr. Waugh. I think you know where the problem is. The pie is here, right? I mean, you're a third uh, party on this, so the English and French will get the most, and then you're in with the rest of them. And with uh, immigration, we're seeing more and more different uh, languages come into this country. So what is the solution? I see here at the very least provide us with GST exempt. But when I say how much is that to the government that wouldn't get, nobody has that figure. Well, the government already makes a, a substantial contributions to the marketplace, and it does so willingly when it makes when it makes its ad buys, or when you've heard others say it, what they do is they tax some and not others. I think the presentations this morning were pretty explicit. They said, bring equitability back. Yeah. You don't want to tax everybody, but tax, or you don't want to tax heavily everybody, but at least tax those who come from outside our borders to make revenue from within our borders at the same rate that you would tax us. Or, as I think you heard someone else yeah. this morning say, you know, make us get some equitability here in terms of the way that the GST is applied or the HST in Ontario. If it doesn't apply to these who come into our marketplace to take away the revenue stream that is afforded to us by advertising, at least follow the example that's being followed by the Italians and the French today, that they're going after Google and uh, Facebook in order to get a more equitable uh, uh, income from the taxes that they appear to be able to avoid. Um, for example, Google uh, invoiced in Italy $14 billion in revenues last year yeah, and I paid $11 million in, yeah. in taxes. Now, you know, how does that help anybody's revenue stream, including the government's? And if that's an, an action that's re replicated here in Canada, and I think a presenter before us made yeah. that case, said at the very least, balance off what you're going to do. Now, how can you do it? You can tax them and therefore increase the government revenues differently, or you can not tax us in order to give us a little bit more of a competitive, uh, competitive advantage. Now, there's only two ways that we pay taxes, HST, GST, and the other one is the payroll taxes that everybody yeah. cannot avoid. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Volpe. If you hold that thought, maybe someone will give you a piece of the action a little later on. Uh, and now we go, we, we go to Mr. Boussin for the Liberals, seven minutes. Buongiorno, mio marito è italiano. Uh, alors, um, comme mon mari est italien, je... As my husband is an Italian, I understand that the Italian community is very important. I recognize that. As you can guess, our meals, our holiday meals, have a lot of languages around the table as we go back and forth. So I, I recognize also the importance of having those languages represented and accessible in our media for, for the various communities. Um, I, I wanted to thank you because you, you gave a great overview of the, the uh, contributions of the Italian community in Canada. 
Um, I was wondering, we, we've had a chance to speak to members of the Punjabi press, the Ukrainian press, and um, ethnic media. And, and, and some of the themes that were coming out were about um, the fact that different ethnic communities were not having their stories well represented in mainstream media. And, and so I was wondering if, from your perspective, looking at the Italian community, how well are Italian-Canadian stories being represented in mainstream media? And, and do you have any examples of the types of stories that perhaps mainstream media is missing? Just why, why it's important to have an Italian voice? <clears throat> Thank you very much. I, I think, first of all, it's important for, for one very essential reason, and that is that the, the government of Canada is actually playing in the market. It, it takes money and it distributes money. It, con it conducts programs whatever the government program, that it informs its citizenry about their efficacy. And so what happens is they nurture community and involvement by redistributing some of those taxes in that environment. So many of us, including us in particular, we're excluded from that story. We can't participate in the developing of the story except through an electoral process, but then we can't participate in having any elements of our community being represented in the way some of the decisions are made and how they're affected. So, for example, you know, you mentioned your husband and the family, et cetera. This, these are great elements, not just of an Italian community, but of a community that's integrated into the Canadian environment and is, is infusing it with a, with a different character, a diversity, which is a common term that people use today, a diversity that's making up the Canadian whole. I just happened to meet one of my students, a former student that used to be a, a teacher at one time. Uh, and he survived my process. He's now the president of OMERS. Um, I, you know, that is one of the biggest, most uh, uh, significant investors in Canadian infrastructure anywhere. And the biggest impact on his life are like those dinners that you talk about and the experiences that are brought into those dinners. I don't want to make it schmaltzy and diminished. The man's a genius, um, and, but he's absorbed all that is Canada, and he has his own, his own imprint. And that's a story that very few people are telling. We'd like to tell it. He's just one of many, now, whether he's Italian or anybody else. I mean, if you come from the GTHA, chances are, uh, I think it's 53%, you weren't born in, you weren't born here, and yet these are all Canadians whose stories have to be put into the telling of the story of what Canada is, what it represents, where it's going. You know, from an economic point of view and a trade point of view, the governments of Canada, irrespective of their stripe, are, are reaching out all over the world to try to make the Canadian presence felt and to get revenue from a trade that sells the made in Canada product. Well. We're a Made in Canada product. We tell the stories, the single elements of that jigsaw puzzle that is Canada. We just want the government of Canada to recognize that we're there. And it's a small contribution. You've heard the other, the bigger players, that say, look, you're not spending money, and by money that you're spending, what little you're spending, you're giving off a message. The message is don't advertise in the Canadian market, advertise with somebody else. Well, what are big advertisers? I noticed that Monsieur Nantel said, you know, l'affichage, you know, you get the, the big signs. Where do they go put their signs? They go put it on an American network. They go and do it with an American or a multinational company. They don't do it with a Canadian company. Sooner or later, that Canadian community, small or large, is going to be diminished in its ability to be able to tell the Canadian story. We're an example. Um, I could give you a litany of achievements of uh, Canadians of Italian background here in all aspects of research, whether it's medical science or technology, whatever. But, you know, that's why we exist, because people want to hear that story. All right. Um, it, it's, it's interesting because I have heard it come up time and time again about uh, government ad purchases and, and, and how, how ad purchases have changed or moved around. And, and one of the questions that I have when we're looking at that Really what we're looking at is different forms of media requiring other supports or, or, or finding new funding sources. I'm wondering if when we're talking about government ad buys, 
we're actually having a different conversation about what are subsidies that are available and if we have to be looking at new kinds of subsidies. Uh, just because advertising choices are based on, on advertising, it's a business decision of a sort, perhaps. Uh, is it more that we need to be finding new ways to support communities, not necessarily talking strictly just about ads? Well, it's, uh, the advertising it has a consequence of, uh, of essentially helping the economic viability of, uh, of the entity that receives the advertising. Um, but government advertising is different from uh, private industry advertising. There isn't a return on investment component associated with government advertising. There, the return on investment is the information that is disseminated to the public and the absorption of that. So it's, it's, a, different, it's a different calculus. Yeah, it, it's just part of the reason why I'm asking the question is because I'm wondering when seconds. I hear about that, my, my question seems to be more that is it not that what we need to do is find other ways to provide supports to media and different ways to disseminate government our government messages, but that really focusing on the government ad pie alone might be it might be taking us down the wrong path is my concern. I, I gave four four separate indications in my presentation about where the government can be involved. The ad buy is one. It makes a big difference to us. It doesn't make very much difference to some of the big companies, uh, quite frankly. You know, they, you had one, and because I know the president well, Paul Godfrey, he said, you know, here we have $600 million, $690 million uh, uh, debt. I mean, you know, getting $450,000 or a million dollars in government ad isn't going to make a big dent in his debt. Um, it'll make a big difference to organizations like our own. A huge difference. Uh, now for Mr. O'Regan. Chair, uh, just a small correction on Mr. Volpe's presentation. Giovanni Caboto actually landed in Newfoundland, not in Canada. Uh, actually in the home of the Biotic people, but it doesn't really matter because Canada had the good fortune of joining Newfoundland back in 1949, and you're all very welcome. Um, I want to get on to the point of, of, of federal, uh, federal advertising. The federal government you know, follows the people, and one of the things that I found in my campaign was uh, uh, the number of people who are on Facebook who are online, and, and that's where we want to follow people. And, and the fastest growing online market is in seniors, for instance. I mean, uh, so of those 75 and over, 5% online in 2000, but 27% of them online in 2012, uh, half of them on Facebook which is not a surprise to me, um, and over one-third of them are on every day. Uh, and an interesting note, actually, there are more people 75 and up uh, doing online gaming at about 36 percent, 27 percent for baby boomers. So huge just among seniors online presence. So, so that's just Facebook alone when you look at it. And so on that note, I mean, and considering that the federal government is going to you know, follow where the people are when it comes to its advertising, what is your online presence and what sort of growth have you seen there? Uh, I don't disagree with what you said. Your observations are bang on. Um, we, we divide our market into, into two parts. First of all, there's the demographic that actually still reads. You know, you read a paper. You have to have something tangible in your hand. Someone who wants to have uh, something to look at in the morning, kind of give them a, a summary of what happened the day before, where things are going, and then conduct their discussions over the course of the day, and then Re recycle themselves. The other component is something that, um, and I, I guess I took a leaf out of Mr. O'Day's book. You know, you've got to, you've got, you've got to update yourself, otherwise you're going to be lost. We decided to go online. So I, I give you an indication that we had, we have over a hundred thousand unique visitors on our site on a daily basis, or sorry, on a monthly basis, um, and we have our hit rate is phenomenal for. Uh, you know, what is essentially a small slice of the Canadian demographic. Um, we, we intend to continue to promote that, and that's why I said earlier on, when the government of Canada is doing its ad buys, and I, I see an ad buy, as Madame said, perhaps as a, as a subsidy too, um, if you want to reach the people that you're going to be representing or that you do represent, we're as good a vehicle as any other vehicle, um, and simply because more and more people in, I wish you hadn't said baby boom area, in the same breath as seniors, because I'm a baby boomer and I didn't like the second part of that definition. So, but 
but yeah, they're becoming more and more accustomed to actually reading things online as opposed to just doing Big the time. gaming. Big time. I want to thank our witnesses for taking the time to come and present to us. And uh, we need to get into business right now, so I would give everyone a minute for us to say goodbye and uh, let's get on with our business quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Joe.